Today we've come to McLaren Vale to a little family owned winery called Ophelian. We picked up John along the way, who some of you might remember from our first season, and we're here to talk about how a bottle of Barolo can change your life. We learned some interesting facts behind the label and how winemaker Rob Mack chooses his fruit before looking at two lovely examples of their wines. So let's get cracking and discover what's behind the Ophelian label. I am Priscilla. I'm Renata. I'm Paula. We've come all the way from Brazil to unravel the mysteries of the Australian wines. Let us take you on a tour and discover what's behind these famous labels. Come on. We are with John and Rob Mack and Priscilla. Rob is our winemaker here in Ophelion. And uh, just to know a little bit about Ophelion history, uh, they start everything with a, a bottle of Barolo, like in, back in 2005. That's where the whole thing started. Okay. Yeah, it was. And that's, that was the single wine that sort of changed my, my passion into a, a real desire to, to work. In, in wine, um, and and that's also the same year where I met uh, Louise, my wife, and we've sort of started this project together, and we have different strengths in different areas. But um, yeah, I'm responsible for all the winemaking side, um, and uh, Louise has a great palate too. So when I'm blending, I'm always putting options in front of her as well. So it, and we're going to keep it that way. We've got no plans to, to expand out past that. Okay. I'm just going to keep it as a family. And then. Business. Just 2014 was the year that you guys started everything. Yeah, so that was the first vintage. Okay, yeah. how, that, that how was, was that? Good. That was, well, it was exciting because I'd worked in, in different wineries for a few years before that, uh, and then I decided to work with a grower in Bluett Springs in the little sub region of McLaren Vale, uh, which has amazing, know. yeah, <laughs> has amazing Grenache. Um, I well know for Grenache. It, it is, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and this grower is uh, a family that's been there for about oh, 100 years on that site, and the vines are about 85 years old. So we took one ton of fruit, uh, which made about three small barrels worth, um, and that was it. That's the start. Um, but suddenly you guys went to almost like 40 tons. How, yeah. how so, this well, it happens? Was, it was like slow. a wine review? And... <laughs> yeah, it all helps. Um, okay. The first three years were quite small. They were all about one ton, one ton, so three barrels, six barrels, something like that. Um, and then in 2017, things were going quite well, and we decided for the 2017 vintage to really jump up. Um, and that's when we went up to, we sort of went about four times the size of the year before, and we just kept growing since then, just slowly. And with Lou, uh, you guys could create like this labels for the wines? So that's all, that was Louise's, um, yeah, that was Louise's uh, photography that, that she was doing at the time, oh, um, which was very interesting, that technique. And the, the image is um, actually of a feather. Um, so the way the, 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 the the process works is is you take a, a photograph of an item and then the item turns white and all around it gets washed out blue. Yeah, that's awesome. uh, and you can see that on the on the labels there. Uh, and then we overlay the sky a sky sort of image with the different colours for the for the different lines. Um, and we've tweaked the label here and there over the last five or six years, but we're at a point now where we're, we're very happy. Aphelion is an ancient Greek word. It means from the sun. And um, it, it's, it's sort of tying in the in the climate with, with the vineyard um, and then across the winemaking. Everything's very hands off and, and um, we sort of respect the fruit as much as we can. As long as the fruit's good in the first place, it'll make good wine. So A lot of different soil types around McLaren Vale. Is there anything specific you look for when you're sourcing fruit and from the growers? Anything about the soils or where it comes from? Yeah, no, it, it's Blue Springs is famous probably for its sandy soils. Um, and that is one of the reasons Grenache thrives so well there, is it does love these sandy soils. Um, the vineyard uh, that we source most of our Grenache from, the grower, um, They've got quite a sandy site, but it's also mixed with a bit of clay, so it's more of a slightly sandy, loamy character. And what that does is, is it seems to give the, the, the Grenache from that vineyard, that particular vineyard, a bit more structure, um, rather than, say, some of the softer characters that you get in, in full sand soils. Um, so that's something we look out for, is, is when we're looking for, say, a, a new Grenache plot to work with, and you know, we're looking for a soil type that, that has a bit more, a bit more loam or a bit more clay in it. Um, down in the southern part of the Vale is much more heavier soils, clay-based soils, and uh, they make a heavier style of wine, which is not what we're, we're all about. Okay. Yeah, when it comes to picking the fruit, you don't have your own vineyard, you work with growers. So how does that work when you're choosing picking times and working in the scheduling with the pickers and everything else? Yeah, so from the years of relationships that we've had with, with these growers, it, um, it, it means that now we're at the point where we can usually 
uh, give it a day or so of where we, where we want to be picking, uh, which is super important because if the fruit comes in uh, too late, then uh, the, the ripeness has been pushed too far and then we're talking about acid, the acid drops out and then there's challenges there. Um, so if we get the fruit at the right time, it's the start of everything looking good. Um, and, and it is probably the most important point of the whole process is getting it picked, getting the fruit in at the right time. Uh, and, and, and because we've been working with most of our, our growers for so long, um, they're very, very responsive. Um, as far as picking times go, which is, which is super important. Okay. It's been a couple of hard years in the region with lighter crop loads and then we had the fires around as well. Um, how are things looking for the next year and what's 2021 looking for, looking like? Yeah, you're right. So we've had pretty much two lean years, especially 19 and 20, where there was half the number of yields basically that we normally get. Um, so yeah, it's great to have one that's probably going to be back around average. Um, we had a lot of rain over winter here and what that's done is put a lot of so uh, moisture deep into the soil. Um, so the vines with their roots going all the way down can, can really draw on that when it warms up soon. Uh, it's been a very mild December so far as well, so it hasn't. there's not been a lot of evaporation, so that soil is still quite moist down, down deep, which is great. So um, yields will be back to average, hopefully, unless something goes wrong, but hopefully not. Um, uh, and probably the only risk at the moment, looking at the weather pattern, the long-term weather pattern, is, is that the rain may continue a little bit longer than it would normally. Uh, and if it does push into still raining in, say, February and March especially, then we could be looking at maybe some disease, mildew issues that might pop up. Yeah. I'll start with the Shannon Blanc, okay. and this wine is from the Blue Springs sub-region, which we've discussed Thanks a little right. bit as well, you're welcome. Uh, and the way we produce this wine is to, to make it into quite a, a textural textural style, so um, we put part of it through through an oak ferment, um, older oak, so we're not, not looking for oak flavour, we're looking for, for a textural, textural style. Um, and then we bottle it usually in around October, so it spends quite a long time in, in oak uh, before it gets to, to bottle. Um, this is a kind of wine that I'd, I'd say is a medium to full bodied white, so um, good for, for a whole range of different, uh, different dishes, but um, a really crisp finish to it, which is important. So it has the body, but then it has a, a, a really juicy sort of acid, acid finish to it. Uh, it's 2020 vintage, so very young, only been released really for a couple of weeks. And uh, just got top of its class at the Carnival Wine Show, which was very exciting. Um, so it's already sort of starting to get some some recognition from uh, from shows and critics, which is great. Yes, nice aromatic, nice citrics on the palate, well balanced acidity. Um, mm. It's quite a well, and the richness as well at the yeah, same time. It's, it's well balanced exactly. acidity, but the richness is coming along on the palate. And then the middle of the palate has come a little bit with more. It's quite creamy. Like, yeah. you still yeah. stick with this. Yeah, it's still a little buttery creaminess to it. Yeah. But yeah, it really, it really sits on the palate well and lasts for a while. It's, it's light, that's, but it definitely sits. It that's with the thing. You. And those 50 yeah. year old Shen invites, they can produce this quite intense fruit. Um, so that's why I've got no problems with, with adding a few textural elements to this because mm -hmm. the fruit's strong enough um, to stand up to them. As long as that, that acid is still there to keep everything nice and fresh at the, at the finish, which mm -hmm. it is, um, then I, I see that as, as quite a complete, uh, complete style of wine. Probably very interesting, like to uh, age for some time as well, like to give more complexity. And, um, Shannon's famous for being out yeah. to go for a long time, so I've tried um, French Shannon Blancs going back to the 60s, um, mm -hmm. and they can still look amazing. So, uh, yeah. and especially under screw cap, um, it means there's no issues with cork uh, oxidation yeah. or anything like that. So, Variation. exactly, yeah, as long as they're kept at the right temperature, um, then there should be no worries with looking at this in maybe 10, 15 years and seeing what it's what it's doing. Oh yeah, um, I should I, definitely yeah. do that. And then like thinking. Dishes like you can definitely have with something that has some um, more uh, some oily character. Like I often recommend a, like a grilled your, salmon, yeah, and that's got that some, combination of what you're talking amazing, about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that oiliness really does match well with this, um, mm. and just that that kind of um, flesh on that fish is, it matches so well. And this is our uh, GMS. We call it the Affinity. Um, and you would notice that I said GMS, not a GSM. So. Uh, what we're looking at is, is only a little bit of Shiraz in this wine, only about 5 or 6%. Um, the majority is, is Grenache and Mataro, and they're really close together, only about 2% um, apart. So um, almost a, a bucket here or there of, of wine would have changed the blend around. Um, the reason we use a lot of Mataro in, in this blend is because it, it, it provides a, a really nice spicy aromatic 
and also a really good structure for the Grenache to be able to um, sort of get up and, and sing with its red fruits and, uh, and sort of those kind of aromatics. It doesn't dominate as much as a Shiraz component would and that's part of the reason why we have such little Shiraz in this is it can really dominate our lighter styles of wines really quickly um, but it is handy to have it there just for a little bit of, um, sort of richness on the on the back palate and uh, no new oak in this um, in fact most of this has gone through five five or six hundred litre barrels um, so punchins older french oak because it's not heavy at all it's such a delicate wine mm -hmm. it's such an elegant wine so yeah. they actually can go with the most of the even the five percent of shiraz mm -hmm. in here brings the spiciness of the shiraz so a little bit of hint but it, it's just there you can just, feel yeah, yeah. exactly and, and any more than that it started dominating so in this blend we normally have maybe 10 to 15 percent shiraz in mm -hmm. a normal or most years um, but in 19 we, in 2019 we brought it right back to okay. 25 percent because they were more finer and delicate and yeah, sort of more elegant awesome. styles more and aromatic yeah, yeah and more aromatic too so we, we sort of built our whole our whole range on aromatics and, yeah. and 19 was a great year for for that so no, it's, yeah um, I do yeah agree. it's a really nice light to medium body style yeah. it'll always be vintage variation that's probably the main thing that comes into play um we do make this wine every year so gms um will always be the order of this of this of this wine um, and, and they show very differently between say the 18 which was quite intense and powerful and then the next year which is 2019 was sort of the opposite it was very this is very fine and delicate and, and poised so um, I'm not looking for for anything in particular um, I'm looking for, for basically wine that shows uh, represents what we're about with those aromatics and those that lightness of touch um, and uh, and I think 19 vintage wise was a great year to be able to show that you make my life so